uh, today we are going to uh, look at a topic, fellowship, uh, fellowship as a key spiritual discipline. And uh, as it was uh, earlier communicated, that the months of August and September, <clears throat> so I have said fellowship as a key spiritual, uh, as a uh, key spiritual discipline. And it was communicated that in the month of August and September, as DCIKZ family, we will be looking at the series of spiritual disciplines or practices. And I remember Pastor Brian took us through the overview, and Rasande Bishop tackled the issue of meditation uh, as, spiritual, as a spiritual discipline. And uh, as we are also area uh, informed about the several authors who have written about the spiritual disciplines. And one of the authors is Richard uh, J. Foster, who, who came up with three classifications of spiritual discipline. And one of them, he said that there were inward disciplines. Uh, and then there was outward disciplines and also corporate disciplines. But there is a, another uh, where fellowship is, uh, is usually classified. And this other is called Daras Wirand. Uh, Daras Wirand. Uh, who divided uh, the two, uh, the, the, who classified in two classes. In one of the classes, he called them the disciplines of abstinence, ab abstinence uh, to abstain, abstinence. So uh, that is abstinence from engagement. And this, he mentioned them as solitude, uh, silence, fasting, uh, 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 secrecy, and sacrifice. Those are those disciplines of whereby you're not engaging, you're abstaining yourself. But now the second class where fellowship is, they are called disciplines of engagement. Disciplines of engagement. And here, he mentioned the study of the word of God, worship, celebration, service, prayer, fellowship, confession, and submission. So today we are going to look at fellowship as a key spiritual discipline. <clears throat> and uh, I think several times you have heard that uh, DCIKZ, we are not a church with the cells, but we are a cell-based church. I'll repeat that. That as the Reverend Church, Kasarani Zimmerman, we are not a church with the cells, but we are cell-based church. So everything revolves around the cells. So uh, we, our church does not end here on Sunday, but it continues, to, uh, it continues throughout the week, even in the, uh, in the church here and even in our homes. And in cells, uh, there are usually three important components in a cell. Three important components in a cell. The first one is evangelism. Evangelism. The other thing uh, uh, is fellowship. Fellowship. So I've said three components of, of a cell. One is evangelism, or, or, or evangelism. The second is fellowship. Or the other word for fellowship is communion, communion. And the third one is edification. So here, one of the things is that, uh, if I would, I'll briefly elaborate about that, is that our cells, they are not members only, clubs. But where we are supposed to invite our friends, our neighbors, and even our family members, so that they are able to come and we, uh, and we, share, we, we, we share the word of God together, uh, so we fellowship together, uh, so, so, so that's the first thing. So the evangelism uh, means that we, we are supposed to, uh, to ensure that we witness to more so that they are, and invite others so that they are able to come to us. The second thing is fellowship. And uh, we are going to look uh, at the aspect of fellowship. But fellowship is a key component of the Christ-like uh, Christ life. So fellowship is a key component of the Christ-like uh, uh, life. Without connectivity that comes from spending time with the fellow believers, we will, we will miss out on many benefits of being a believer. And I thank God that today we are going to get more on this. And the final thing is uh, edif edification, and that's where the word of God is usually there. We either have the booklet that we are using or even the bulletin that guides us so that we are able to flow together. And as a church, we are drinking from the same pot. So that's why we do not call our, ho our home churches fellowships. We call them cells. Because fellowship is only one of the items, uh, one of the key components. But the three components there are evangelism, fellowship, and edification. Bernard Kuzwe. So, uh, and one thing, cells multiply. We, we, we know that cells multiply. That's why we usually say we, do not, we have not divided a cell, but a cell has multiplied. So, and as DCIKZ, 
we also have uh, members, we also have great opportunities to fellowship with others, be it in our networks, because we can fellowship with them in our networks, that is be it in the men groups, be it in the ladies group, be it in the youth, youth groups. So we can network there. We can also network with others in, in the departments that we serve, in the ministries that we serve. We also have privileges also to connect with other believers in our workplaces and even in our neighborhood. And that's why the word of God says in uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, we are not reading, uh, just referencing, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, that two are better than one. Two are better than one. Because if one falls down, there is someone else who is going to make them, uh, uh, to, uh, to help them st stand. So we need each other so that we can be able to complement one another. And uh, I'd like just to, uh, to, to, to emphasize the importance of fellowship whereby you are able to interact, to connect with others. When you're able to connect with others, there are very great benefits. There are people who have benefited from the men group, from the ladies group, of, or, or from the youth networks, or from the departments that you, you serve. Sometimes it comes as a prayer item. And when it comes as a prayer item, because somebody you, have, uh, you are able to connect with that person, maybe you are also able to get your solution there. And I remember one time, uh, I, I think it was mom who gave that testimony, or someone, one of us in the G12, and he was saying in one, one of the times in a, in a cell, in a cell meeting, there was a lady who was undergoing staff. And uh, as the lady was undergoing staff, the house was closed and even the children were sent away from school. And what happened uh, at that particular time, that lady was very regular in going for the, uh, for, for the cell meeting. And uh, he said, have this prayer item. And before even that, there were prayer items. That, but now this time, even the, the house was rocked and the children had been chased from school. Uh, so after they, they prayed, they, they prayed for, for, uh, for the lady. But after that, one of the lady said, Mama Frani, gojea kidogo, wale wengine wakitoka. So that lady happened to have uh, had a school. He alikuwa mwenye shule. So baada ya hiyo, wakamuambia, uskajari, watoto wako kutoka mande, wakuja shule, na hata wakuja na hizo uniform, wamekua kitumia. Maneno ya shura ikawa soft. Jambo ingine, uh, 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 maneno, uh, pesa ya nyumba na ikapatikana. Kwa sababu, jawabu yake ilikuwa wapi, ilikuwa pale. So when we interact with others, there are great benefits. And another time I happened to be a man, or, uh, uh, one of the, uh, I belong to men of faith. And uh, one of uh, the men of faith, though now most of the men of faith are men of, of dominion in, in the other campus, but here we are, men, we are still men of faith. Uh, uh, my, my son had been called to Kware, Kware High School. Na alikuwa na 402 marks. Lakini sasa nilikuwa na imagine 402, anaenda Kware. Nikalani, nikajua anaeza pata shure zingine. But mimi mtu wakanirifa niende Guvio Boys, which is a, a national school in Embu County uh, at Runyenges. Lakini siku hata najua principal. Mimi nikika pale, kama ni mesimama, uh, watu nasikia watu wakisema uh, principal alikuwa mkutano na, na wa, wa, watu wa form 4. Hey, anasikia watu wakisema, ha, uyu hata tunajua, mini deputy pahari fulani, na huku secretary ya meniambia, already kumefungwa. Anambia, oh, kama ungekuja jana, uh, ungesaidika, mini kamambia, lakini, si principal mtu waneza nisikiza, mini tagoja tu kwa sababu, na mini ata nisaidia. Kanyambia, nye si mtu mbaya. So, mini nimeketi hapa, lakini saa kwa sababu, watu nimeketi nao hapa, vile nasikia wanasema, wanajua principal, uh, najua hapa, sipi, sina bahati. Lakini, ripinduka hivi, nikaona mtu wanaitu amberia, ambaye tulikuwa nae kwa, uh, kwa men of faith. Ah, Beria, nikaenda kwake. Ah, wakawa sasa walikuwa na mtu wanaagana, huyo mtu wakaingia staff room, na mimi nikaongesha Beria. Akaliza mchungaji, unafanya nini hapa? Nikamuambia sasa mtoto wangu ya kwale, lakini sasa kwale ni mbali sasa mina ona, na kwa sababu kijana mejitetea, wacha tuone kama atulisa ni mutaftie shule. Akaliambia na siwio tulikuwa tunaongea na ee, nikamuliza mwleju wana principal. Kasi ama siwio tulikuwa tunaongea na ee ni principal, ndi ule ya pale anakunywa chai. Akaliambia kuja tuende, tukaenda kwa principal. Principal alikuwa meeka chai, amekunywa zipi ya kwanza, ya pili ya kikunywa ndiyo tulifika. Aka nikamuereza, akaliambia mzazi, kama ungekuja jana, ninge kusaidia. Mimi nikamuambia, mimi nyenye ata sekretia, aliniambia vile uliniambia. Lakini mimi nilikaa na nikola conviction utanisaidia. Nikamuambia, nisaidie tabadhari. Haka niangalia, haka niambia, rete hii resort slip. Haka niambia nyewe kijana ya majitetea. Haka niambia, ukai hapa kwa staff room, nikambia, kaa hapo na uskatoke. Hei haka ipitia ndani, kwa sababa taki kupita pahali watu wa mejaa, haka ingiria pande ya ndani, mimi niliretoa barua na deputy. Nikambua ficha hiyo barua na utoke. Eh? 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 So, mimi nikatoka. 
lakini hiyo ilitokana na wapi na fellowship because we had connected with Belia i was not a stranger to Belia so even us here in the church we may be members of DCIKZ but we are strangers with each other sometimes we sit with someone week after week but you do not even say jambo au ibada ikimalizika ukifika pale wewe ni kwenda ni kuchomoka tu badala hata usalimie mtu unasemanga kwa kanisa hakuna upendo but have you tried to connect with others have you tried to connect uh, with, with those that you serve with in the various areas that you serve bwana atukuzwe so our main scripture today is uh, acts 2 verse 42 and i will write it in the amplified version and uh, it talks about the early church that they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of apostles to fellowship and to eating meals together and to prayer so we have a, an example of the early church uh, the new testament church that they, they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instructions of the apostles and to fellowship to eating meals together and to prayers so so we can see uh, there were several things that were, were happening there that it was something it was not a one off but they were continuing and faithfully one of the, the things they were devoting themselves to the instructions of the apostles to fellowship to eating meals together uh, so and to even to prayers so <clears throat> but maybe you are asking what then is fellowship maybe that's the question what then is fellowship fellowship is a key component of christ like life fellowship is a key component of the christ like life without connectivity that comes from spending time with fellow believers we would miss out on many benefits of being a believer and also uh, we can also say that fellowship is maintaining a relationship of unity through love and fer- uh, and friendship so brethren we need to know that christianity is relational christianity is relational so we have the vertical relationship where we are supposed to have a good relationship with god our father but we also have the horizontal uh, relationship where we are supposed to, to uh, interact and connect with our fellow believers so relationships are mainly by association relationship are mainly by association like the way we are all associated here as DCKZ members but fellowship is by communion fellowship is by communion where you are able to connect and interact with others so i repeat that relationships are mainly by relation by association but fellowship is by communion it is it is possible to have a relationship with uh, without fellowship like here uh, we can we, uh, some of us uh, we have never ta- said jambo to each other so we have a relationship we are members of this ekz so you can have a relationship without fellowship but it's impossible to have fellowship without a relationship we should therefore all desire to go beyond just relationships and begin fellowshiping with one another salvation ash as as uh, ashes us into relationship with christ but fellowship with uh, with christ is what causes us to be christ like so, uh, uh, so so fellowship with others Uh, 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 with other believers is what causes us to be christ like because christ happens to be there uh, we, we, we are supposed to live life uh, imitating jesus so we also need to appreciate that christianity has both conversion and conformity Christ, uh, Christ, uh, christianity has both conversion and uh, 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 conversion conversion and conformity relationship is uh, is the ground for conversion from one kingdom to another so relationship is the ground for conversion from one kingdom to another remember we have two kingdoms we have the 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 uh, the, 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 the kingdom the, the dark kingdom and the kingdom of the right and about the kingdom of the right the word of god declares that is a kingdom which is everlasting whose dominion endures through all generations so that is the kingdom so there are two kinds of kingdoms so relationship is the ground for conversion from one kingdom to another but communion is the foundation for conformity to be christ like 
communion is the foundation for conformity to be Christ-like. And therefore, for all of us as believers in Christ, the head goal of our faith is to be Christ-like, not just church members. So we need to move from just church members to be Christ-like. Bwana atukuzwe. So the Greek word for, word for fellowship is ko, koinonia, koinonia. That is K-O-I-N-O-N-I-I-A. The, this mean, uh, ko, ko, uh, koinonia, this word means maintaining a relationship of unity through love and fellowship. The Trinity, that is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, is a perfect picture of ko, uh, koinonia, where we are, we are talking about a relationship of unity through love and fellowship. So we know that the Trinity is always one. Bwana atukuzwe. But there are three things that are needed to establish meaningful uh, uh, fellowship. There are three things that are needed to establish meaningful fellowship. And uh, this we are going to pick from the word of God from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Colossians chapter 3. And I know before even we read that, I know that today as you came to the church, you clothe yourself. Knowing that you are going, you are not, you are going to the church, or even when you are going to, uh, to your place of work, there is, uh, you, uh, there is a way you clothe yourself. So even when you are going for an occasion, you clothe yourself for that occasion. But because you are supposed to be Christ-like, we have recommendation from this uh, Colossians chapter uh, 3, verse 12 to 14, on what we need to clothe ourselves as the chosen, uh, as chosen uh, go, uh, people of God. But I would like we read all of us. One, two, three. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive an, one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So, even as we interact, so the scripture is very clear on what is expected of us, uh, as, what, uh, as God's chosen people, what is expected of us, that we need to clothe ourselves with all those things. But to be able now to, to walk together, from verse 13, we are going to see, to 14, we are going to see three key, three things that are needed to establish meaningful fellowship, or which can be able to enhance meaningful uh, uh, fellowship. The first one is forgiveness. Forgiveness. So we, are, uh, we will see that we are instructed to forgive one another. And from that verse 13b, uh, it says, Forgive one another if any one of you has a, a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgive you. And that's why in Matthew 11, 25, Mark, Mark, Mark 11, 25, uh, the, uh, the word of God says that, and when you, you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. Even in what we call the Lord's Prayer, so the issue of forgiving others is always there. That forgive, forgive us as we forgive others. So there is an expectation that people, people are, are going to cross our paths. But we have been, uh, uh, there is an expectation that we are supposed to forgive one another. It's not a request, but an instruction from God through his word. If we forgive others, then God will forgive us. And if we do not forgive others, then God will also not forgive us. So it's a condition, and it's an instruction. So here is an expectation. What is expected from, from us? Meaning fellowships are established where they are forgiving hearts. We do not forgive others because they have repented, but because we have the life of Christ, and forgiveness is our nature. We know that we stand as those who are forgiven. So who can say that they are the redeemed of the Lord? If we, have, we are the redeemed of the Lord and today uh, we have partaken the, the, the Holy Communion because of the finished work of Jesus, 
So we stand forgiven. And we are expected as we interact with others that uh, we can forgive others. So on our own, we cannot forgive and release others. On our own, we cannot forgive and, uh, 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 and release others. But through the cross, we can be able to forgive and to release. So that, that should be the case that we should, be, uh, we should be keen to forgive others because as we continue to interact with them, look, even in your own what of mezaliwa pamoja, ata mzazi sa zingine ata anakukwaza. Kama ni mandugu zako anakukwaza. Kama ata ni muke wako wa buwana yako anakukwaza. Kama ata ni watoto sa zingine anakukwaza. Ata watu wano wengine, even the, the fellow believers, they, 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 they are likely even to do that. Forgiveness is relieving yourself from the burden of carrying others. Na ndiposa tukitoka encounter watu walisema, mi nasikia ni kuwa mwepesi. Kwa sababu mizigo ni me, ni meacha. Hmm? So, 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 so forgiveness is relieving yourself from the burden of carrying others. It is portraying your trust in God, knowing that vigilance or, or revenge belongs to him. Kukona mambo unafika pahali na unaachia mungu. Na unasema apana hii na juo utanipingania. So the first thing which is key to, establ to, enhance, to establish or enhance uh, meaningful relationship is uh, fellowship, is uh, forgiveness. The second item is what is, is called forbearance. 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 That is bearing with each other. And from that verse 13a uh, uh, of Colossians 3, it says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against them. That bear with each other. But the same is also repeated in, uh, by Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. It says that, I therefore, uh, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Verse 2. With all roariness and meekness, with wrong suffering, forbearing one another in wrath, forbearing one another in wrath, and uh, 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 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So we have said the first thing is forgiveness. Now we have come to uh, for, uh, for, forbearance. So forbearance could be explained as showing patience, even, even though something is old to you, uh, uh, to you. It's holding back or restraining yourself from doing something that is normal for you to do. It is controlling oneself when provoked or offended. And uh, sometimes, even if somebody has done something, because I would like to have my peace, and I know that God is my source, and God in his own way is able to come through for you and do good and great things. So, uh, and there is this story which was told by the late Reverend Mwethi about uh, porcupines, porcupines uh, uh, during winter uh, where there is ice and they have what is called uh, the, the, the sharp uh, spines, the sharp spines, porcupines. But what happens is that uh, for, for, them, for them to outlive the season, they usually come together. And as they come together, they are able to poke each other. Zinadungana. When they come together. Even, for example, kwangu ni kona na pusi katha. Na onanga hata wakati wabaridi unapata zikopamoja, zikopamoja zimeshikana vizuri. So, but what, what, what usually happens, kama pa kona moja itasikia imedungwa, ye inadungana, na ye inadungwa. Lakini ire itaona imedungwa sana inakaa kando, most of the times it's not able to outrive the season. So, Sometimes so we, uh, we, we, uh, so we, we, find, we find ourselves that we are sometimes to, to, in Afrika Pahari tuna, uh, tuna dungana. But in Vizuri to, uh, we have what is called uh, forbearance. That is bearing with, uh, with each other. Forbearance is different from forgiveness. But a person who, who forbears another is a, cardinal, is a candidate for forgiving. I'll repeat that. Forbearance is different from forgiveness. But a person who forbears another is a candidate, a candidate for, for forgiving. In other words, forbearance is the capacity. Forbearance is the capacity to adjust and accommodate others with their uniqueness and diversity of approach to matters. Some people will keep on repeating the same thing 
and sometimes you get weary of forgiving them. At this level, you need to cultivate an attitude of forbearance. Kuko mtu ambaye umesamehe, umesamehe, unaona hii kitu ni kama amezoea. Sasa inafika pahari, you move from forgiveness, you go to what is called forbearing. Forbearance. Sawa, sawa. And there is a, a story uh, Bishop, uh, one, one, one time I had Bishop give concerning a couple ambaye walikuwa nasumbuana. Na walikuwa nasumbuania kitu kidogo sana. Walikuwa nasumbuania tissue. Moja alikuwa anataka tissue ikiteremuka hivi na mwingine hasa akivuruta hivi. So walikuwa wanabishana sana. Na ikafika pahali ikabidi waende kwa mchungaji. Mchungaji akawaambia sasa kama hii kitu ndio inazumbua wekeni stool hapo muwe mkiweka tissue hapo juu. Na kutoka hapo mambo ikabadi ikabadilika. <laughs> and that's why some, someone said that the problems that we share are more than the problems that divide us. And those that divide us are of our own making. So it's important that uh, we, we, uh, we move from forgiveness to forbearance. So uh, the third thing is exercising sacrificial love. Sacrificing sacrificial love. And that we are going to see it in, from verse 14. And it says, and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. So here we are talking about agape love. So agape is one of the several Greek words for love. When the word agape is used in the Bible, it refers to a pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires another's highest good. That is agape love. And uh, we'll quickly go through Three scripture One of them is first, uh, all because uh, is first John, uh, first John chapter four, verse seven to eight. Uh, it says, first John chapter four, verse seven to eight says, "Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love." And the other scripture is first uh, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7. It says that love is patience. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not honor, uh, dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And then Philippians, Philippians 2, verse 3 to 5 in the New uh, Living Translation says, Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. So this scripture, when I look at this scripture, it usually talks about what is called empathy. Empathy, putting yourself in somebody's issues. And we know the difference between empathy, uh, um, uh, the, the, the opposite of empathy is what is called empathy, where you're not interested in mamba ya watu wengine, unaona how ni mzigo. And finally, Proverbs 17, 17. Proverbs 17, 17. It says, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. True friendship matures into brotherhood. True friendship matures into brotherhood. You can disown your friend, but you cannot disown your brother. And that's one thing that even when we come to the family of God, we become not only friends, we become even brothers. And that's why we need to enhance fellowship with one another as we connect with one another. Love is what connects men. Love is what connects men. As human beings, we have limits to love at all times. But a man or woman who trusts in the Lord can love at all times. Can love at all times. When, when friendship, uh, friendship uh, fellowship matures into brotherhood fellowship, it becomes a bond that can, cannot, uh, cannot be broken. And then we go to application. I would like we go to application. Uh, we are picking lessons from the early church. And this, uh, we are going to read uh, Acts 2, chapter 42 to 47. Acts 2, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with, uh, uh, with awe, 
at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to, one another, to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their houses, in their homes, and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So, so, so the word uh, of God continually reminds us that we are, we are, we are meant to walk our spiritual, we are not supposed to walk our spiritual journey together. And that's why the word of God in Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, reminds us, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So, uh, when it comes to practical, uh, how to, uh, to have uh, fellowship on how to apply the aspect of fellowship, uh, there are four things. Uh, the first one is make genuine connections. Make genuine connections. Make genuine connections. So, uh, be purposeful in connecting with others. Take time to build deeper relationship within the, uh, the church or faith community, with friends, with neighbors, workmates, and even family members. Give people you interact with what is called a triple A treatment. A triple A treatment. And when you give people a triple A treatment, you give them three things. You, the first thing that you give them, you give them your attention. And that's why when you are talking to someone, you should not talk to someone. So you eye contact. So you need to give that person your attention. The other thing you need to, give, to, to do, you need to give them affirmation. Affirmation. If God could, uh, could affirm his uh, begotten son that this is my son in whom I'm well praised. So even all of us, we need encouragement. So the first thing we have said, uh, the AAA treatment we have said is attention, affirmation, and the third one is appreciation. Mutu wakifanya jambo mzuri. Si muambia mefanya vizuri. So, hiyo ndiyo inaitua AAA treatment. And uh, uh, you, you, you can do that, you can use that AAA treatment, especially even as you begin from today, and you see where it takes you. Move beyond service level interaction to share your life and faith more uh, intimately with others. So, ya kwaza tumesema, make genuine uh, uh, connections. Even our mom, uh, Reverend Iris, always reminds us, connect before you correct. Connect before you correct. Sometimes you, uh, everyone has a story. And uh, sometimes you judge that person negatively because you don't know the idea behind them. And there is this story which is told of uh, this man who was traveling with, uh, with a train na alikuwa na mtoto wake na alikuwa ni mtoto mkubwa. Lakini sasa, wakienda kuingia pahari vile miti zikitembea, train ikitembea, alikuwa nasema, ona, ona, miti natembea, miti natembea. Wanaenda pahari, wanaona wataingia chini, pahari pakona a tunnel, anasema, tutakongo, tutakongo. So there was someone who was next there, and he was very much irritated. Anashidua kiki mtoto kikubwa, kweni ajai kutembea na train. So when now, akaona ata vumiria, akauliza baba, kweni nini mbaya na huu mtoto wako? Akasema, I'm so much excited that my son has never seen Today he's seeing for the first time. Eh? So he had a story. And when that person saw that, so everyone has a story. So that's why we need to, be, to make genuine connection. The other thing as we have seen in, in, in that scripture in Acts 2 is to pray together. Pray together. That is number two. Pray together. Make prayer a central part of your fellowship. Pray for one another needs and take God for the blessings in your lives. And then three, serve each other. We need to serve each other. Look for ways to serve and support those in your community, whether through acts of kindness, sharing resources, or providing a listening ear, embody the love of Christ in your action. So, kukula mambo mingi ambayo nezafanyia watu. Pengine hata ni hizo forum ambazo pengine ni ya home cell, your department Lakini usiwe so indifferent hata unaona mtu wakona jambu Hata kutoa hiyo miyamoja wa miyatano Wea unaona wengine unaona hiyo si yangu So we need to be a blessing one unto another 
And the fourth one, which is the last one, meet regularly. Meet regularly. So, and that, uh, that scripture which we read in Acts 2, uh, it, uh, it, be it begins by saying, they continually, it's, it used the, the word, and it says, as, as they continue, they, uh, so, so, so it means that they continued, it's, continue, it's continued, so it's not a one-day thing, so we need to meet regularly, meet regularly. Commit to regular gatherings, and that's why like says they are supposed to meet every week. Mm -hmm. Commit to regular gatherings with fellow believers, whether it's a weekly small group, Bible study or church service, prioritize these times of communion, worship, and running. And that's why in Proverbs 27 verse 17, it says that iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Usu an attitude that you know, you, you, you know it all. There is a lot that you do not know. Mm? So it's good to remain humble. As I conclude, we need to be deliberate or intentional in enhancing fellowship with both God and, uh, and fellow men. And we need to always remember we are blessed to be a blessing. Therefore, let's purpose to be a blessing to others, not to be just both a bother. Kuwa baraka kwa wengine. Don't just be a bother. Atu wea tu kuwa na shida ndiyo unataka watu wakuje kwako wae baraka kwako. Be our blessing. Choose not to be a bother, but a blessing. A blessing one unto another. And the only debt we, have, we, we all have is the debt of love to one another. Agape love, uh, agape, agape, agape love, that is the Greek word for love, is not much, much a matter of emotion, but having unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best of others. And I'm going to conclude as we look at Romans 13, uh, verse 8 in the Amplified Version. It says, Oh, nothing to anyone. Oh, nothing to anyone except to love and to seek the best for one another. He who unselfishly loves his neighbor has fulfilled the essence, uh, the essence of the rule relating to one's fellow man. So, to see when a den in Guinea, like in two and a hidden ya, upendo. Na ire ya ku conclude, conclude kabisa. Wacha to some, you know, we preach uh, an everlasting gospel. And as, uh, that's why to na semanga imeni mara mingi. So to to some Colossians 3, 12 to 14 in the message version. To tasoma si zote ndio tumalizie. So one, two, three. So chosen by God for this new life of love. Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Be there, be even tampered, content with second praise. Quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, we are love. It is your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Hmm? So, uh, remember we said that to begin with, uh, we begin with a relationship. And then we need to move to uh, uh, we, say, we, we, have, we said that the first thing, we begin with conversion. We begin with what? Conversion, which move, removes us from one world to another. And then we, uh, we go to communion, which is the foundation of conformity to be Christ-like. So I don't know if you are here this day and do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. So you can, uh, uh, go, uh, uh, when you say yes to Jesus, you're able to move from uh, the, dark, uh, uh, the, 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 the dark kingdom to the kingdom of the right, which the word of God declares that is an everlasting kingdom whose dominion endures through all generations. And you can say yes to Jesus. And you can just raise your hand wherever you are, and I can lead you to a prayer, and uh, God is going to forgive your sins because he saves, he sustains, and he satisfies. Are you there? And I give you this chance. chance. Even after this, uh, the, the readers are here, and, they, and even the ushers can be able to guide you appropriately, and God is going to do good and great things to you. So let's purpose even in, uh, to continue to enhance fellowship as a spiritual discipline, as we forgive others, as we bear with them, as even we show sacrificial love, and as we practice, make the, the application of the four things that we have seen. Let's all stand up even as I, we conclude in prayer.
Our Father and our God in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to glorify you, for Lord, you reign. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, Lord, through your word, in a language that, Lord, we can understand. And Heavenly Father, Lord, even as we live here, Lord, and even as we begin a new week, Jehovah God, cause us, Lord, to apply the truth, Lord, of your word, Lord, that, Lord, there may be change and transformation, Lord, in our lives, Jehovah God. And Heavenly Father, Lord, even in times, Lord, that we feel that, Lord, we cannot forgive Jehovah God. Cause us, Lord, to remember the work of Jesus on the cross. That through the cross, Lord, we remember that we can, uh, that it's only through the cross that we can be able to forgive and release others. And Lord, we, we, you cause us also to remember that we can bear with one another king of glory because we are also not perfect, Jehovah God. But above all, Lord, cause us, Lord, to exercise sacrificial love, king of glory, for one another king of glory. To the honor and to the praise, Lord, of your holy name. Lord, as your people begin a new week, Jehovah God, give them, Lord, a great and a victorious week. Lord, even as you go before them, be their rear guard and give them victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.